Well, what's up guys and welcome back to episode number three in our track building series so if you've made it to this point you should have watched episode one and installed resolute kraken's track builder helper tool you should have watched episode two which is actually creating a height map here and testing out in game to make sure it's as you want it to be and you should now be at the point where you're happy with how your track rides you've got all your corners your jumps your ruts and now you want to get to the point where you start to kind of customize it a little bit and make it look as good as it can do so this is going to be in two little sections the first thing you need to do is decide on what textures you want to use now there are two ways of doing this and i will show you both ways uh, first of all is very very simple you go on google you type in dirt textures and you have a little scroll through and see what you can find now let's say i am particularly happy with uh, this dirt texture right here what you want to do is in photoshop you want to create a new document and you want it to be a 1024 by 1024 size document. You want it to be RGB color and you want it to be 8 bit. So create that. Now, if you copy the picture that you desire and paste that over into Photoshop, uh, this is the texture that you have. So you remember in the last video, I compared the texture to being like a square of wallet. That square right there is your wallet. So if we go over into the Resolute Kraken track builder, I'll show you what happens. So remember our repetitions up here at the top left. If I left this repetition at one, it would take this one square and it would expand it to the entire size of the track. So essentially what you see right here, it would overlay this picture on top of that. And we don't really want that, do we? Because there's lots of uh, like, like dark areas within this and it would just be like one massive like blackish slash dark brown area here. So what you want to do is when you are importing this, you make sure that you keep your repetitions at about 100 or so. And in order to save this, it does need to be saved in a certain way. So if I do file and we go to save a copy and we will choose a folder that we used previously. So for me, it will be in track building and tracks. And you'll remember in episode number one, I made my folder UK AX round three at Aberdeen. I'll click on that. And then I'll click inside textures and I will just call this texture mud just for ease. Now you want to make sure your file type, you save it as a targa file, which is a .tga is the extension at the end. This is the format that the game likes. It will not read it as a PNG. It has to be a targa file. So I will save that there and you want to save it as 32 bits pixel. Again, that is what the game likes. That's what the game reads. And if you put that into Resolute Kraken's track builder, it would probably throw out an error if it wasn't how it liked. So we're going to select our texture here. We've got mud. I'll press open. And you can see there now that that has updated from the previous dirt texture to our new one. Also, just wanted to show you a quick difference in these textures. So this was the texture that we used previously. This is stock Faboso dirt texture that comes with the example track. And this next one will be our updated texture. And there's our updated texture right there. You can see how much of a difference it makes. And uh, as you can see, it gives you like a bit of a checkerboard pattern. And this brings me on to a very important part of this is you need your textures to be like, I think they're called seamless. So it will take this outside. And like I said, it copy and paste it. You want it so the texture is repeatable. So if you go onto Google and type in seamless dirt texture, then you'll have some better ones like this that do not have borders on them so i'll show you what it looks like when we go and copy paste one of these ones over into the game instead and now we've updated our texture to a seamless text so you can see there's no checkerboard effect there's nothing like that we have just got a different kind of text here than what we started with and this is fully customizable by you so let's say you like the i guess level of detail that you see in the dirt here and you like it to be like that little bit grainy have a little bit of depth to it and but maybe you just want it to be a different color instead uh, I will show you how to do that also. So this texture right here is what you just saw in my map viewer. Now, if I want to change this, say I want more of a an orangey kind of dirt rather than this like lightish brown or slashy gray color that you see here. If I go to Photoshop, I've got my layer selected on the right hand side. If I go down to the bottom here and it's kind of like a, a circle with a little diagonal line going through it, you click on that and then you click on hue slash saturation and this will create an adjustment for your layer. Now you can see just above my face cam there, we've got a few options. If I turn the saturation up, it will basically like bake it. Like you see them, them kind of memes of memes that are like fully baked and 
you don't want to do that too much. So I'll leave that kind of where it is. But the one at the very top is the hue slider. And that's the one that you kind of want to be messing about with. So if I want this to, I guess, become a little bit more orangey, I'll slide it along to the left slightly so it becomes a little bit more on the reddish side. Then we go and turn our color up. And we've just taken one layer that does look like this and now given it a completely different hue and a completely different tint. Now, let's say that you liked, for both those stock texture, you liked how uh, kind of simplified it was. It wasn't too grainy. It didn't have too much contrast in it. Then you can literally lo load it up, double click it. It will open it up in Photoshop just like this. And you can do exactly the same thing that you just did. So I click the little padlock next to the background so it unlocks the layer so we can make some changes to it. And down at the bottom again, we'll click our little circle. We will click hue slash saturation and exactly the same again. You can do whatever you want. If you want to make a space themed map, you can do so. You can have absolutely bright blue dirt if you wanted to. And uh, let's see what that looks like in game. Yeah, as you can see, you can do some very, very weird and wonderful stuff when it comes to the texturing. Uh, so mess around and find some colors that you like. Now, what you want to bear in mind is when it comes to texturing in this, you want to have at least two layers to get any sort of detail. Now, in my personal experience, I find what works best is if I have a, a darker color underneath, and then if we go to add layer here and we add a lighter color on top, then when we go and do our masking, which I'll show you shortly, you'll have your kind of top layer that's a little bit lighter. And then you'll have the bottom layer showing through in places. So it looks like it's the ground's been ridden on more. It looks like it's got ruts and grooves in it. And uh, we'll, we'll show you that now. So now I've got the very difficult task of explaining masks to you. So you remember before when it comes to track building, uh, everything that was black was the bottom of the map. Everything that was white was the top of the map. When it comes to masking, everything that black, that's black, your color won't be there. Everything that's white, your color will fill. So I'll show you an example of this real quick. But before we do that, we need to make a new document for it. So if we go to File and we go to New, uh, you want to select either a 1024 by 1024 or a 2048 by 2048 document. Uh, again, RGB color and 8 bit and press Create. And uh, the reason that I wouldn't recommend going any higher than 2048 by 2048 is more so from a efficiency standpoint, just on how the game runs. If you go really, really high, obviously your file sizes will get really big as well. And uh, some of you keen-eyed people will notice that the most recent track I released, which was at uh, Belfast Arena Cross, the file size was about 700 megabytes just for a little Arena Cross track. And that is because I did not optimize or make my files as efficient as they could be. Uh, and I use an 8K map. So we're going to do it a little bit differently today. We're going to go to 2, 2K to see how it works. Now, what you're going to do is you're actually going to want to put your track on top of this so you can see where you even need to start like drawing and painting. So I come over to my height map. We've got all of our layers. And uh, what you're going to want to do is just to make sure that you don't kind of get rid of anything by mistake. Uh, down at the bottom here, you can create a new group with a little folder. I would recommend highlighting all of the layers that are relevant to your track and putting them in that group. And then we're going to duplicate that group. So now we've got two copies of it. We've got our group here and we've got our group here. Uh, we are going to click on either one of them. It doesn't matter. And then right click and merge group. So now this has got our entire track here as one layer. Now you'll see that it's kind of got some black outlines around it. If you come to uh, this box just above that currently says normal and click on that, you want to scroll down and select the screen option and that will remove those little boxes there. Now, if we right click and we duplicate this layer, we can select what Photoshop document we want it duplicated onto. I want to select an untitled one because that is the document that we just made and press OK. Now, if we go over to said document, you will see it here. Now, it's a little bit smaller at the moment. And that is because you will remember our Photoshop document for the height map is currently 1025 by 1025. However, our document over here is 2048 by 2048. So if I press Control T, this will select it for me. And all you simply have to do is go up here to the top where it's got like your dimensions. It currently says 100%, just change it to 200 and it will double it in size. Now, I would also recommend the, to line them up best, Photoshop uh, by default does kind of show you where things are. Uh, so for this, I'm making sure that they are both lined up in the middle. We've got our cross here. 
I'll also go over to our new one that we're working on as well and make sure that it's like bang in the middle as well because otherwise you'll start drawing your lines and stuff and go to put it in track and it won't line up with where the jumps actually are. Um, now this is just a base for us. This will actually be deleted by the time we come to finalizing things and we'll, we'll just remove it when the time comes. But this is a base, this is a template for us. Now, the best way to explain what we're doing here is uh, we've got our two dirt layers right now. Uh, I do not need to do a mask at all. We don't even have the option to do a mask on the base layer. The entire bottom of your map will be, will be this color. What we are doing now is we are painting where we want the top color to be. So what I would recommend doing first, because I'm not a Photoshop pro by any means, I'm actually very, very bad at Photoshop. Um, we could actually do something as easy as this. We'll, we'll see how this works real quick. I could just save this as my mask and everything that you see that is highlighted here will be highlighted on the track. So I'll show you what this looks like in game as well. Now to do this, if I select my layer here on the right and I press Control A on my keyboard to select everything and then Control C to copy it, I then need to click Channels here, which is just to the right of Layers. And then at the bottom right, there will be a little plus symbol in a box. This will create your alpha channel. Now I will press Control V and it will paste it into a, this alpha channel for us. And uh, we can we can deselect this, we can leave it like this. Now, if I go to File and I go to Save a Copy on your computer and we go to our track folder. So again, mine's in Tracks and then Aberdeen and we go to Mask. We can save this as the file type Targa again. So Targa, which is a .tga. And I'm just going to call this a uh, dirt mask. And we're going to save that. And again, save it as a 32 bits slash pixel. So now what we do is just to the right of our texture, it gives us the option to select our mask. So we're going to press select and we go to our mask folder here and we have our dirt mask that we've just saved. I will open that. And now if I build these and show you up what it looks like, and this gives you a perfect example of what's going on here. So this is our track right from the top. And you can see that we've got our base layer, which is our darkest layer right here that is on the entire track. And then you can see that the jumps and the berms have been highlighted with this lighter color up here. So all of uh, everything that's around here is all that base color. And as we fly in and get closer, you can see that there's been a lightness added to the tops of the jumps and the berms as well. Now, the best way of describing this is you'll see the, the top of this jump right here, for example, is lighter than the top of the triple, well, the three foot single next to it. The reason for that is in Photoshop, if we uh, zoom in on the mask that we made, you'll see that the top of the jump face here is whiter than the gray that we've got over here. That is exactly how masks work. So if we go back to our little project here and let me go to a full white color and we can just do a little bit of painting real quick. If I type in lol right here, you will see that this will become the brightest part on the track. So this white is even whiter than this. It will be a hundred percent the same color as this when we go and save it again. The issue we have now is that we have two separate layers. So what you want to do is uh, highlight both of them to do this. I have one selected. I'll hold control on my keyboard and select the other one. I will then right click and merge layers. Now I can do my control A to select, control C to copy go over to my channel, go down to my alpha map. Now you actually want to delete this alpha map. So the little bin at the bottom right will do that. And you press yes. And then you just want to press the plus at the bottom to create one again. Then you can press control V to paste it. So now we can do our file, save a copy on your computer, masks, save it as a TGA file. And I'm just going to overwrite this previous one that we already saved. And now if we build all again, which will just take a second and that is done, we can go back into our track map viewer, uh, open, reload the track map, and you will see that we've got our lull over there. And you can kind of start to, it has moved slightly, need to fix that. Um, you can see how it uh, starts to work where the whiter it appears in Photoshop, the lighter it is in game. Now, in doing this, we can go and make a hell of a lot of changes, and I'll show you what you can do. 
Now, if you're a very hands-on person, you might want to uh, draw a bunch of lines yourself that the bikes may have ridden around. Uh, so you can draw a few lines like this, have them all going all over the place, and then just draw your lines in the corners. Uh, maybe So my starts up here, for example, maybe I want to have some lines coming down the start straight to see where riders have been riding. A uh, little, little highlight in this corner, maybe, because there's people uh, riding round all the way around to the outside. Uh, if you have a rhythm section, for example, and you know that nobody's going to roll this single here, you can have them coming around the berm, taking off here, and then you can have them landing on this second one and the third one, taking off here, uh, downsiding this jump here. You can be very creative. You can basically dictate where you want these markings to be. Um, what you should ideally do is remember that everything that we have here that's pure white will be the same colour as this lull. So you can imagine that would look a little bit weird. It would make more sense if it was more of a closer colour to these lighter colours here. Uh, just look slightly more uh, ridden on slash worn in. So now we've got more detail here that we want to get onto the track. We're going to highlight both of these layers again. We're going to right click and merge one more time. Control A and Control C to copy it all. We are going to delete our previously made alpha channel and create a new one. And we are going to paste it in there again. And you can see now that again, we've got all of our extra little details. And now we can go and save this out again and reload it in the map viewer to see these changes that we've made. And now that we're loaded in here as well, you can see these extra little ruts that we've added in all about. They're very, very faint, but that's because we made them light in Photoshop. But if you want to make them even lighter, for example, then you can do that just by going into Photoshop and increasing the opacity. Uh, so for me, I could just uh, control, un control undo because I've already merged these together. Or I can change the opacity a bit to turn it up and that will make it even lighter. Now, you might want this the other way around. You might want uh, the whole ground to be the lighter color that you see here. And you might want the dirt that's showing through to be the darker color here. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either switch these two colors around, uh, and I will do that right now to show you the effect that you'll get. There you go. As you can see, we've got the darker ramps on the jumps, and then uh, just that very, very dark bit over there. Uh, personally, I prefer it when the bottom layer is darkest and the lighter part is on the top of the jumps. I feel like it highlights them a little bit better and makes them easier to see for me. But the choice is completely yours. The other way that we can do that is if we switch these two colors back around to what they were, and then over in Photoshop, we do a control I, and that will invert these colors here. And then we will just go and save it this way instead. So onto your computer, again, a TGA file, overwrite our dirt mask, go into Resolute's track builder, got our dirt mask, we will build it all again. And I, I really like that, because we've got so little going on on the track right now, it builds very, very quickly. Open, open, and there you go. You get kind of the same effect. Now, you can go as insane with this as you possibly want to. Um, I've seen some absolutely incredible, incredible uh, screenshots of what people do. You can even go as far as going onto Google and downloaded custom brushes as well. So if you're not a fan of this hand-drawn uh, rut technique here, uh, what you can do alternatively is download some custom brushes and I've got a couple already pre-installed which is basically like a rake pack where it's got a bunch of different uh, rake textures now how big were these last time okay let me select one so you could do something like this where it looks like it's all been ridden over uh, I think we've got a better one than that yeah not a big fan of that one let's turn the smoothing up at the top to 100 see if that helps there you go you can see you can do stuff like this where if you can imagine, if it then covers the entirety of the track, it gives it a much different uh, kind of feel. It looks a much more, I guess, uneven, if that makes sense. I think that's the best way. Or you can do something like this to have it look like ruts that are ridden through. Um, but it can be a little bit of a, a manual process. I'm sure that there's many different ways of going about doing this. This looks like quite a good one. Let's try, let's try this one out real quick and do it so it covers the entirety of the track. And we'll just pretend that the track's been ridden on or graded, something along those lines. Ignore how messy it is. You can obviously spend a lot more time doing this. I'm just going to ride my way around here. Do, 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 do. And you have to remember that all of these uh, light bits here 
this will show as a lighter color in game because of how we've got our textures set up. Um, I might try and do it the other way around actually. So if I select these two layers, we will merge them together again. I'll press Control A and Control C to copy it. Go over to my channel here and I'll actually just paste this. Uh, actually, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. Let me delete the other one and we'll paste it over top again. So we'll make a new one and we'll paste it. Saving it as a TJ again, dirt mask, yes. And then go to our track builder, update it. And I actually wanted that the other way around. So uh, we're going to put our light dirt on the bottom and our dark dirt on the top, just like that. Build all. And now what I'm hoping is once that is built, we will now have uh, some sort of like a trail going around the entirety of the track here where uh, the track's quite light. And then the bits that I guess are more ridden on will be slightly darker. And it has done exactly that. So you can see the kind of transitions, the different things you can do to make it look different. Uh, this is something that takes a very, very long time. I'm very, uh, I guess, blessed to be friends with people that are very good at this. And a lot of them can do things for me. And I will show you what a finished product looks like. Right. So we've been through the stages now. You can have a mask that's something as simple as this that just highlights the uh, the ruts and the berms and the jumps. Uh, you can have something that's a little bit more developed that we made here with a few little trowels. Uh, or if you are someone who is incredibly skilled in Photoshop, uh, you could probably get something close to this, which is what I use for mine. Um, I didn't make any of this, by the way. Um, I use templates that people have given to me. But the main thing, the important thing, is that you save it the right way. So one final time, I've got my mask here. I'm doing Control A to select all, Control C to copy it. Going over to my channels, I'm going to delete what was here previously. I'm going to add a new one, control paste it in, and then we need to go to file, save a copy, save it as a TGA file or a target file, go to my track, go to my mask, save it over top of my old one, and that is me done. So let's see what it looks like in game. And so now we're here in game. You can see our track is looking nice and beautiful. Uh, our textures are all over the track. We've got some like slightly lighter up faces to backsides to seeing what bits of the track have been ridden on more than others. And you can kind of, you can just tell where everything is. It's a lot easier to spot where you're riding. However, you may notice that the, tex the textures, they look almost like a little bit flat. You know, there's not too much depth to them. So whilst the differentiation in colors is good to spot where you're going, there's not much of a 3D aspect to them. Uh, so what we're going to do now here is the final step, which is actually going to be creating norms. And that norm is something that adds depth to your textures. It gives the appearance of uh, being a 3D effect. And we can do all of that within Photoshop as well. Now, there's two options when it comes to making norms. If you have created a mask like this that covers the entirety of your track, and you've just essentially got two layers, and that is it, then what you can do is you can duplicate the, your mask right here, add it into a new document. And all you have to do is go up to the top where it says filter, go to 3D and go to generate normal map. This will generate a map for you. Uh, there are some very important options here. You need to make sure that this box that says invert height is selected. And then you wanna make sure that you don't go too insane. So if I've got this on 120 detail scale, it will look a little bit crazy. You won't like the look of it at all. It'll be way too, it'll be like over detailed and it'll add loads of like random black bits all over the place. Uh, so I like to turn it down to a little bit around about 50%, I think is okay. You can go a little bit more if you want, but I wouldn't really advise it. Uh, so we press okay on that and that that is your norm, that your norm has been created. So what we do is we go to file, we save a copy, we go to my computer. Now, if I go over to our textures, and I will save it as a TGA file. And I'm just going to call this a uh, dirt norm. I've got one here that I made earlier, but I'll just overwrite this for now. Replace, yes. And you want to save it as a 32 bits pixel. So now if you go into Resolute Kraken's Track Builder, we hit this little drop down here that says additional settings, and we turn normal map to on. We can then select our dirt norm. And this is very important. So we want our repetitions for this to be one because this covers the entirety of the map. If you had this set to 100 repetitions, it would duplicate this over and over. And you don't want that. Then you're going to have 100 versions of your map. 
over the map. So we're going to leave this at one. And what we're going to do is we're going to build all again. And we will load this up in game to see how it looks. And now that we're in game here, you can see that the jumps have a bit more of a, a 3D nature to them. They look a little bit more in depth. And I would actually go as far to say that I think the 50% that I use still might be a little bit too strong. So you can see in some places it looks absolutely fine. Like along on the straight here, it looks quite good. Like this rut looks like it's got a little bit of a 3D nature to it. However, coming over to places like this, this jump landing, you can see it's a little bit over the top. It's a little bit too 3D looking and, and mushy. Uh, so you need to play around with it a little bit, see what uh, settings suit your individual track needs to the best of their ability. And uh, yeah, that is uh, option number one. Option number two that you have is to give a norm to the actual texture itself. So what we can do is if I find that dirt texture uh, by clicking on dirt here, it will load it up in Photoshop for me. Uh, we can do exactly the same thing. Uh, I need to untick this little lock so we can actually edit it. Then we go to filter, 3D and generate normal map and again it will create a little texture for us i'm going to turn it down a bit from the last one we done because we saw that was a little bit overkill uh, we'll put it on about 30 percent and press ok now if i do file save a copy save it as a target file and i'm going to call this one uh small small dirt norm and press ok save it as a 32 bits per pixel now if we go over to the track builder we will select that new one. So instead of our dirt norm that we made before, we will do small dirt norm. This is the important bit. Because we are only doing our little square texture instead of doing the entirety of the map, we need to make sure that the repetitions match this up here. So we need to press, press this little slider to on and it will do 100 repetitions. So it will line up perfectly with our dirt texture. And now you can see the effect that we have is a lot more subtle. So if I zoom in, you can see that there's a little bit more of a 3D nature to the texture itself, um, but the masking goes unaffected. And it really depends what sort of, I guess, effect you prefer. Uh, personally, I'm actually quite liking this second one where we've just done the texture itself a little bit. Um, so I think I'm, I'm going to stick with this one. I really, really like how it's come out here. And I think for me, instead of doing like a massive 8K texture like I've done in tracks in the past where the file size is huge, uh, for a very similar looking effect, this is a really, really good way of going about it. And that was the fun part where you get to spin a couple more laps and see how the track rides as well. And you can tell already that our track is uh, is coming to life a bit more than from the last video. Uh, so at this point, obviously you've done episode one, you've installed all your tools, you've watched episode two, and you've gone and created a height map and a track that you actually enjoy riding. So you've got all your jumps in the right place, your ruts in the right place, your corners, how you like them. And now what you've just done is uh, you've gone back through the entire thing and made it look a lot more attractive, made it look a lot prettier. Uh, so now we're at the point where we've got our track, we've got it looking how we want, we've got it riding how we want. And the next part is what really brings a track to life overall and makes it feel like a track. And that is going to be the object. And that'll be in the next video because that is Blender. And we need to introduce you to Blender because Blender is not an easy program to get your head around. Uh, so well done on making it for this far. I hope it's been fairly straightforward to follow along with. And I will catch you in the next video, episode number four.